Hey, what's up, turtles? It's Crick here with Black Owl Outdoors. And today I wanted to do a video explaining what magnetic declination is and how to actually adjust that and use it on a compass. And what's prompted me to do this video is I've had a few questions about it on a video I've already done, um, compass and navigation tutorial. If you want to reference that, look at it, you can do that as well. But like I said, what prompted me to do this, I had some questions and I left that video sort of, sort of simplified and I didn't go into declination because it's a little bit more advanced, it takes a little bit more, you know, um, more abstract thought, if you will, to use that. So I have a, I have a little diagram here that I've drawn to help explain what magnetic declination really is. And you can see I have, this is, I have the earth drawn here. I don't have any land on it, um, but you just imagine this is the earth. The south pole here, I have a little bit of the cap drawn here to help show, and the north pole here. Where Santa Claus lives, the other cap here. And what that means, this north-south line that I'm tracing right here is, you know, true north or grid north as the earth would sit. But where declination comes into play is that's not where our compass points. Our, com our The compass uh, needle is magnetized to the earth magnetic poles, which I have uh, expressed with this line here that's off axis with the uh, north-south line of, of true north and grid north. So for the sake of this drawing, this is magnetic north pole. Running down here is a, is a uh, excuse me, magnetic pole in the south. And declination is literally the distance, is, the, is expressed in a degree, in an angle, is the distance between this north-south line here and the magnetic north-south line here. And this little pie cut here, that's declination. And how you adjust that depends on the, on the compass. And I have my Silver Ranger 515, which has adjustable declination, which means I can adjust it once and I don't have to worry about it again until I, maybe I, I move on to a different map or a different place. Because <clears throat> there's lines. It's really easy to find your declination. You can type it online for where you're specifically going to be. If you have a USGS topo map, it'll actually have your declination on it, kind of expressed in that angle I've shown on here. Um, but now I'm going to get the compass out and really show you what that what that what that looks like and what it means on the compass. So this is the Silver Ranger 515 CL that I've done review on. I've used this in my other compass video. Let me get this off my head, and make it a little bit easier. But I have the actual declination already changed on this. I want to set it back to zero. But you can see this black this black line here. Is it picking it up? And you, can you see the numbers? This is the actual the declination is. There's a east to here has declination here and west, and there's a zero down here. And there's a zero line that runs in the US. But like I said, if you want to find where your declination is, you can just type in your location. There's websites that'll show you, tell you exactly what your degree is. But to change this declination on this, I'm going to use this little piece of metal here, and there's a little flathead screw in here. And when I put this in, it's gonna it's gonna change this line. I want to get it back to zero for the sake of the start of this video. Get that to zero. Looks about good. Okay, so now, if I wanted to go north with the way this is set, I'm going to take the north on the bevel right here at the end, and the tick, and put it up to this little index right up here, and that's north. And to get the north, try to get the angle, I'm going to line up the, the magnetic needle, which is pointing in one direction here. I'm going to get it inside the red outline underneath it, and that's how you determine where north is. Now to compensate for declination, where I know where I where I know, uh, excuse me, where I am in Pennsylvania right now, it's 11 degrees east. So to change this to 11 degrees east, I'm going to go back and adjust the declination to 11 degrees east. Keep going. There's 10. Between 10 and 12, there's 11. Now what that did is change this red outline arrow here. Before it was pointing with a straight north and south line. And now it's off 11 degrees. You can see if, if your imaginary line between this north and south here on the bevel running straight, you can see that that, that the red um, outline arrow and the black one down here, it's off a little bit. And that's literally what I've uh, sort of compensated for using this. What that basically done is, this is my north-south on my compass on the bevel, and changing the declination, it moved this inside the bevel to, to adjust and compensate for it. So now what I want to do, if I want to go to north, I can keep it on here. 
line the arrow up inside of the inside of it using the sliding mirror. And there's north. Where I am specifically, this is pointing to map and grid north, the north pole, with being adjusted for declination. Now, if I didn't have um, a compass that, like this that had adjustable declination, it's really a pain in the butt to try to navigate with this. So I'm gonna turn it back to zero and show you what you would do if you had a, a cheaper compass that didn't have adjustable declination. And I don't recommend using a compass like that if you actually do wanna navigate using a map, you wanna orient and all that stuff. Get yourself a compass with adjustable declination. It'll keep things much easier and straighter in your head. Um, so I changed this back to zero, my north-south line on the, on the, on the, excuse me, the, the bevel lines up with the inside of the, the red outline arrow and the black here. They're all lined up. Now if I point this to north like I did before, this is going to point me to magnetic north. It's not going to take me to grid north, or uh, which, which obviously you want using a map that has, a, has the earth on it in the grid. So to compensate for that, I'd have to actually, now using, it gets a little confusing, but since mine's 11 degree east, I'm going to take it back and move the actual, actual bezel 11 degrees and that's north now now I know you know the north <laughs> is to the right of this pointer index but to get to grid north using this without adjustable declination this is what you'd have to do now and now this will give me accurate grid north but on the you can see on the bevel the bezel excuse me it's not to the north so that's really some abstract thinking you would have to compensate every single time if you're trying to take uh, a bearing <clears throat> if you do not have adjustable declination you're gonna have to uh, do something like this, which, I, like I said, I do not recommend. I do not recommend at all, if you want to orient. And that's pretty much the ins and outs of declination. You know, I hope, I hope I've explained it well. To, to really be able to orient, you have to sort of put yourself outside of yourself. <clears throat> if you're looking at a map, you have to sort of build this three-dimensional construct by having yourself be a little dot on the map and sort of pulling your perspective out of you and getting a bird's eye view to really understand what the angles and what all that means to you on the ground if you're looking out in the forest and I'm looking at a map, pulling my perspective away from me on the ground and looking up and be able to visualize what's ahead of me, you know, from a bird's eye view. And that's what really, you know, I, I believe separates the great people who can orient and use a map and compass is being able to pull their perspective outside of themselves and help get a bird's eye view and help visualize what's, a, what's in front of them, around them, where they've been, and how that looks on the ground too. So <clears throat> if you have any questions, if I didn't explain anything in depth or if you want to ask me, you know, to help you, if you have a trip coming up, please leave comments, ask me, I'm more than willing, you know, I'll try to respond as quick as I can, all that good stuff. This is Crick signing out with Black Outdoors. Later, Turtles.